Welcome back. This is Karnath, and today, can we can we turn off the music, please? Please turn, just turn off. Okay, well that's better. All right. Um, you're here to install High Sierra on your PC, so let's get right into it. To get started, download the Clover Bootloader and Multi Beast, as well as all the kicks you'll need to get your PC's hardware running in macOS. I'm sorry about the poor video quality of this tutorial. I tried to get multiple different screen recording applications working, but none of them did on High Sierra, so apologies for that. Once you've got the Clover bootloader, your config, texts, and multibeast downloaded, don't worry about the APFS file just yet, we're going to create the install USB. This works by using the official install macOS High Sierra app from the Mac App Store. Grab a USB drive of your choice that has at least 8GB of storage on it. You'll need to erase this completely so make sure to back up any files that you may need. Open Disk Utility and select the USB drive in the left column. Note the device number that's displayed in the table on the bottom left. Click erase at the top. Type the name USB and choose macOS Extended Journal as the format for your USB drive. Click Erase again to start the process. You might encounter an error just like I did. This is nothing to worry about. Simply select the device again in the left column with the same device number you noted earlier. You can also check the size in the top right. That should give you an idea if you selected the right one. Click Erase again, type USB, choose macOS Extended Journal, and finally click erase again. It should definitely work the second time. The USB drive has been erased now and is ready for us to copy the installer to it. Close disk utility and open terminal instead. We're now going to use an Apple provided terminal application called create install media to copy the installer files to our USB drive. For this we need the install macOS high Sierra app. Right click Install macOS High Sierra, click Show Package Contents. Now navigate to Contents, Resources, and select Create Install Media. Go back to Terminal and type SUDO space. Now drag the Create Install Media file from Finder into the Terminal window. This will insert the path to it conveniently. Type dash dash volume and drag in the USB drive from your desktop into the terminal window. Type dash dash application path. Now we need to drag in the entire installer application. So navigate back out until you see the .app file and drag that into terminal. Finally, type dash dash no interaction to make this a seamless process and hit the return key. You'll be asked for your password, so type in the login password for your account. It's not going to show why you type it, that's normal. Press enter again to start copying. This is finished once terminal reads done. Type exit, hit enter, and close terminal. Next up, it's time to install Clover Bootloader. This will allow us to copy the drivers to the correct path afterwards. Make sure your USB is still inserted into the computer and right click the Clover installer and then select open. Press continue, continue and click change install location. You need to select your USB drive now. It's going to be called install macOS high Sierra. Click continue again, but now click customize. Depending on your motherboard, choose Install for UEFI booting only, or click Install Clover in the ESP. Now, click the triangle next to driver 64 and choose OS X Aptio Fix 2. Click Install once you've got all the options right. This can take a few minutes, but afterwards you should notice a new drive called EFI on your desktop. Click EFI, Clover, and now drag in your config.plist that you created or downloaded from the internet. Click replace when prompted. Do the same with the kext folder. Now onto this APFS file. 
This is a file that allows us to use the Apple file system that was introduced in High Sierra. Open up your install USB and right click install macOS High Sierra. Show package contents again and choose contents shared support base system.dmg. Double click the image file and skip the verification. Now open user standalone and i368. Finally, copy the apfs.efi file over to the driver64uefi folder in the Clover directory. As a final step, it is always useful to copy the Clover installer and MultiBeast or any other Kext applications that you may want to use onto the USB because you'll be missing your network drivers on the initial setup. There we go. We have finished creating our USB drive and are ready to install macOS High Sierra. Depending on whether you've installed macOS on this PC before, you might need to adjust the UEFI BIOS settings. If you plan on using Intel graphics, make sure that any add-in graphics are disabled, and vice versa. Also, double check the other settings I'm showing on screen to make sure they match. Choose your USB drive as the primary boot device. This will be useful during the installation. It's now time to save changes and reboot. If you, like me, did not select your USB drive as the primary boot device, press the hard key that your BIOS uses to select the boot device manually. This is Clover Bootloader. Make sure to select your external USB drive called Install macOS High Sierra. Press Enter to boot. After a few minutes, you should be greeted with the install screen. If you didn't connect a mouse or keyboard or they weren't recognized, you might see the following screen pop up. Just make sure to connect a USB mouse and keyboard for the install. Once you greet it with the utilities window, choose disk utility because we need to format your hard drive with Apple file system. Wait for it to load and then select the correct drive on the left hand side. Once you got the right drive and partition selected, click erase on the top, just like we did for the USB drive. But this time, enter macOS as the name and choose APFS, short for Apple File System. You can close Disk Utility at this point. Next, we'll install macOS High Sierra. Press continue and accept the license agreement. Next, select the drive that you just formatted. You'll see its size at the bottom. Unfortunately, this is not a blind install. Your computer will restart several times and you will have to select the correct boot disk at multiple points. Select your USB drive again. Clover will usually choose the right option for you, so press enter to boot macOS install from macOS. If you don't see the Apple logo immediately, that means that verbose mode is activated. That's good, because in case of a critical system error, you'll know it right away. Your computer will reboot once again, 
So make sure to select the correct drive and you should be on the way to macOS High Sierra. At this point, simply complete the setup process just like you would on any regular Mac. If your Ethernet drivers are missing, you might not be able to set up iCloud at this point, so skip it for the moment. Once you're done with the setup, open up your USB drive again and install the drivers you need. First off, we'll need to install the bootloader on your local hard drive. So run the Clover setup again, but this time make sure to select your boot drive instead of the USB. You will need the same drivers that you needed for the install. So click Customize and choose your UEFI or ESP and the OS X Aptio Fix 64. If you like, you can choose the theme at this point, and what I like to do is install the Preference Pane because it provides updates. Note that if you would like to use MultiBeast instead, that's completely fine. I'm using my own driver set, so I'm not going to show you how to use MultiBeast. There is a nice tool called Clover Configurator that allows you to change up the way the Clover bootloader works. You can set a default boot volume and choose a timeout as well as boot flags. So go ahead and go to the URL in the description and download Clover Configurator as well. Once you've moved it to Applications, right-click and open. You'll have to confirm to allow it to run on your Mac. I mean, Hackintosh. Mount the EFI partition that corresponds to your boot volume. It might not show correctly, so just mount different ones until you find one that has the Clover directory without your drivers. You will also want to mount the EFI directory of your USB drive because you can simply copy the entire thing over to the one on your hard drive. That way all your drivers and config is copied and you will not have to configure it again. That's it! It's time for a final reboot to see if everything's working. Go ahead and unplug your USB drive now because we want to test if your hard drive install is working. As you can see, my system booted up completely in 42 seconds. If you thought the video quality couldn't get any worse from here on, you're wrong! Welcome to shaky cam mode, as I try to explain to you how to change your default boot volume and disable the timeout to speed up the boot process. Drag your config into Clover Configurator to open it just like this. Make sure to select Fix Shutdown if your shutdown isn't working properly and reboots your computer instead. I recommend timeout of 0 and setting your default boot volume's name to the name of your boot volume, in my case macOS. That way it'll boot automatically without you having to press anything whatsoever. These steps are optional, but if you do select a resolution you might see uh, the proper boot screen once you need it. Alright, so it's time for another reboot and test. Alright, that seems to be working fine, so let's go to the final step, customizing your About This Mac screen. This is what it looks like without any modification. Pretty boring, huh? So go ahead and press Command Q or the Axe to quit. Type in 
system profiler into spotlight hold command and then press enter right click the application and select show package contents now navigate to contents resources and scroll all the way down until you find systemlogo.tiff this is the file you need to replace with your own it's just a matter of finding a picture you like and uh, dragging it into the resources folder Now it's time to insert your own name instead of the Apple product that's displayed at the top. Open Finder and go to your user folder. Now press Shift Command G to go to a custom folder called Library. Scroll down until you find Preferences. In here you'll want to look for com.apple.systemprofiler.plist You'll need to download Xcode in order to open this file properly, but once you have, simply replace the product name, for example iMac, with your own creation like Hack Pro. Keep in mind that you need to replace this every update. That's it. Thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope it helped you and uh, otherwise have a great Hackintosh day. And by the way, sleep is working on my setup. What about you?